Hello televiewers, good evening and welcome to The Point. We are very, very sorry for the late starter. We promised to bring this program to you live at 9 p.m. We, Our guest was caught up in traffic. We understand how uh, Douala is, but we thank God she finally arrived and that we are going to be discussing what was planned for tonight with her. Our guest on uh, The Point today is uh, Edith Kawala. She is the president of CPP and uh, equally the leader of the Stand Up for Cameroon movement. We are going to be discussing with her on the just ended Cameroon das Patriotic Diaspora Forum. That is, that is the third edition that took place in Munich in Germany and uh, equally look at some of the burning issues touching on our, our national uh, life, especially with uh, respect to what uh, took place at the level of uh, the U.S. Congress and uh, U.S. Senate. We are glad she is with us. Uh, Madam President, good evening and welcome. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. My very first time. <laughs> yeah, we'll be tracking, tracking you, running after you to have you. Yeah, we are glad uh, you finally made it to our studios out here at Fern Gudrun Bangue in Douala. I start by asking you uh, who is behind this um, whole movement of uh, Cameroon Patriotic, uh, they call it Cameroon Patriotic, Cameroon Patriotic Diaspora Forum. What is um, the motive behind it and who even created it? So Cameroon Patriotic Diaspora mm. is, um, as its name says, mm. a group of Cameroonians who are from the diaspora, mm. and they are from the diaspora at large. So uh, you have uh, somebody like the outgoing uh, coordinator, Genesta Prizo, mm. who is uh, based in Abidjan, in Côte yeah. d'Ivoire. You have uh, somebody like the incoming uh, coordinator, uh, Dr. Eta Ewane, who is based in Germany, in um, Munich, where we had the conference. Uh, you have uh, people from Belgium, you have people from the United States. Uh, so it is a grouping of diaspora who um, are very, very concerned about the situation in Cameroon and want to weigh in with their own ideas, their own contribution to bring about change in, in Cameroon. Okay, uh, so the motive is just to bring about change in Cameroon? Absolutely. What was the motive for the third edition that took place in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in Munich? Munich. As so as, uh, as you mentioned, it's mm -hmm. a third edition, so yeah. the Cameroon Di Di Patriotic Diaspora has been holding an annual conference every year for mm -hmm. the last three years. Mm -hmm. And um, in this particular conference, the theme was on how to bring about political transition for Cameroon and, um, you know, to get back to a situation of peace in, in, the, in country. the country. Yeah. So that was the theme. Uh, Cameroon Patriotic Diaspora, we have to mention, has been in partnership with Stand Up for Cameroon for over two years now mm -hmm. and um, they are in partnership with a variety of other organizations so this was the opportunity to bring them together uh, to bring these various organizations together we had there were um, there were special guests at the conference which were uh, Metro Alice Com. Yeah. from here, from civil society, myself as a political leader and also as a member of Stand Up for Cameroon. Um, Dr. Albert Mutudu uh, participated uh, virtually by uh, giving his own contribution, contributions virtually. You had the likes of Metris Sim. You had Metris Sim, yeah. uh, whom, as you know, he is a vice president of the CRM party. Um, you had... Um, uh, the Southern Cameroonian community in Munich uh, that was also represented there by their president. Um, yes, yeah, so these were the main guests at the event. Okay, uh, the main guests. How did uh, the Munich Forum go? Who financed it? The forum is financed by the Cameroon Patri Patriotic Diaspora itself. Mm -hmm. uh, their members contribute to enable the um, forum to take place. Uh, one of the key founders also that I should not forget is uh, Ludovic Lado, 
uh, Pea Lado, who is very well known uh, on the Cameroonian scene, um, they financed it themselves. Uh, we, as guests, were very, uh, I can say we contributed also because we were very uh, modest in our, uh, in, you know, the way that uh, the logistics were. Mm. Uh, uh, this was not a, a hotel, you know, five-star hotel. You somewhere. were well-received, taken care of? Very well taken care of. Mm. Very, very well taken care of, but, you know, modestly, because the objective was not to have uh, a lavish affair, but rather to sit down and to be able to discuss the issues of Cameroon. Okay. Um, the theme reads, uh, the urgency of a national dialogue and a political transition for peace and reconciliation in Cameroon, should we still be talking about agency at the time that Cameroon is into conflict for more than three years? Isn't it time for action? Of course. Um, well, urgency means we should act now, right? Yeah. Mm. Uh, so the the urgency is is. Uh, um, I mean, the, we are in an extremely urgent situation. Mm -hmm. So I think the theme was very correct mm, very uh, timely. to have that theme. Mm. Um, it, the idea of the Munich conference was really about collective action. Okay. If you look at the group's concerned, Metra Aliscom is a known actor. You have had mm -hmm. her on so many television mm. programs yeah. and so on. Uh, CRM is a political party which is in, 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 in movement, in action in Cameroon. Uh, Stand Up for Cameroon, as you know, uh, is very, very active. Mm. And the, the, the diaspora, is, also the very diaspora active. is active. So the idea is how do we converge our actions? How mm. do we bring you know, everything we are doing together so that we produce results? Because as you have said, People are dying mm -hmm. every day. We mm -hmm. are in a country where people are dying. Villages are being burnt. You know, there is one atrocity committed after the other. Um, we can no longer stay in our different camps with our different approaches. Mm -hmm. We have to create synergy. And uh, this was the idea behind the, the Munich uh, uh, conference. And uh, I think we were very successful uh, mm -hmm. in that regard in being able to, it was kind of like a workshop atmosphere. It was not a fancy conference. It was for us to really roll up our sleeves and say, what are you thinking about the situation? What are you thinking? What have you done? Because sometimes also we are acting, the others don't know what we are doing. Um, and then how can we move things forward? Now, uh, in that conference, you say it was a working session. If yes, I yes. What it, uh, also a very important present were the federalists, mm -hmm. uh, federalist group from the UK mm -hmm. and uh, from the US who were also uh, represented there. Part of the session, okay. Now on the anglophone crisis, um, I'm going, I'm going to start looking at uh, the declarations that mm -hmm. we made. You see, you are demanding an immediate and unconditional ceasefire between known state armed groups and Cameroonian. I mean, how do we get to a ceasefire? Because uh, severally, other institutions, other quarters have asked for this. Mm -hmm. So right now, mm -hmm. the job is that of us. Uh, mm -hmm. It's our job as Cameroonians yeah. to demand this unconditional ceasefire. Ceasefire. I'm very surprised since I came back. I, I only came back last night. Yeah. But uh, I have been uh, listening to Cameroonian news. Um, and I'm shocked to hear government talking about back to school. Mm. We are the ones to ask government for back to school. Government's job is to tell us how they are going to cease fire so that children can go back to school. Go government cannot be asking for back to school as if they are not the protagonists. They are not the people on the, on the ground mm. who are responsible for the problem and therefore have, have to bring a solution. So all we want to hear from government is between now, we, already, we have already started August, mm -hmm. if we want children to go back to school, and we all do, government should be telling us whom they have contacted on the other side to discuss ceasefire. 
Now, you say you want ceasefire. Yes. And you are saying that you are surprised that the government is not telling Cameroonians how they intend to stop the guns from smoking so yes. that children can effectively turn, go back to school. But you say it is also the responsibility of everybody. How do you mobilize the population to engage government to cease fire? You know, we are, we'll be coming out with several uh, actions in okay. the coming weeks, mm -hmm. which we have discussed in Munich. Uh, but we have said it very clearly that the population must come out in non-violent demonstration. Mm -hmm. We have been saying this for years because if you do, if the government has shown us that it is not responsible enough on its own, it does not care about us as its citizens on mm -hmm. its own to take care of us, to stop the shooting, to stop the fighting, to mm -hmm. stop you know uh, 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 antagonizing. The, 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 the population. So mm. it is our job as citizens to come out and tell that government that this can no longer take place. Mm. As you know, we have already relaunched the Fridays in Black and we are asking Cameroonians to come out much more strongly in this month of August, mm. every Friday in their Black to inform government that things are not okay. We have two key demands. One, liberate the prisoners. We are going to discuss them, I'm sure. Yeah. And then to cease fire. Now, cease fire so that the we unconditional can ceasefire, get, you, get back you are to requesting uh, say states, non state armed groups, and the government to cease fire. Yes. You've talked about the government. What are you doing with the non state armed groups? The non state armed groups will uh, heed. They will listen to government okay. because government shot first. We can, we can never forget that, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody had arms at the time when government started shooting. Government shot at an unarmed population. Now, those who took up arms, we do not agree with them, but we have to understand, understand their logic. They took up arms saying that they are defending themselves against a government which is shooting at them. Um, um. This is how this started. So if government is serious about a ceasefire, immediately mm. those who say we are defending ourselves against government have to come to the table. Now we all know the situation on the ground. Mm. We should not have any illusions. We know that at this point in time, government must first and foremost speak to the people over whom it has 100% control. Yeah. That is the leaders of the interim government who are in prison, Sisiko uh, Ayuktabe and the others. That's place number one to start dialogue. Two, they must talk to the groups on the ground. We, government has unfortunately created a very complicated situation for itself. Had government addressed this situation three years ago, we would not be here. But they have allowed the situation to degenerate on the ground. And mm. you and I and every other Anglophone knows that there are groups on the ground which are not controlled by any interim government or any. So now government will have to face those groups on the ground itself, division by division, to go through all of the 13 divisions in northwest and southwest so regions and get us to a situation where we cease fire. Now, the Munich uh, Forum entirely places the blame on the government yes. uh, as, as far as uh, this ongoing crisis is concerned. It is true the government is to blame, but uh, do you also think, like other people, that uh, the political class, the civil society, has also failed Cameroonians because? It's true, the government has not done enough. If the government had taken uh, good care, we would not be where we are. Mm -hmm. Do you also think that the political class and the civil society have a part to, to, to play as far as the blame game is concerned? Very certainly, I think that we could, we, no actor in the mm. current situation, unless they are uh, unreasonable, mm. um, can feel that there are not things which we could have done differently, which we should have done differently, mm. not to get to where we are. Mm. So it is clear that um, I can say as a political actor, I look back over the three last three years and I say, I wish we had, had pushed harder. Mm. Uh, in, in our case, as a uh, standoff for Cameroon, I think we identified many of the points at which we could have 
uh, put a stop to things and we voiced those things but I think we should have pushed harder to get the others on board to get everybody to go along to say that no here we have to take a firm stand mm. um, um, but we cannot overemphasize the government, the government responsibility because mm. it is still government which has closed off space for us as political mm. leaders. Mm. I remember I was in uh, Bamenda on the 22nd of September. You remember yeah, 22nd yeah. of September was the mm. first March. Mm. We went to Bamenda a few days before and we wanted to hold a political meeting mm. to discuss with the population about nonviolence, to try to avoid the radicalization that we were seeing, that we were getting reports of. We were refused the holding of our political meeting yeah. on that date. Um, we can say, I, can, I can say very firmly that we have met with government officials, we have met with military officials, we have met with uh, church officials, uh, um, uh, traditional authorities, to try to put a stop right from the very beginning to this radicalization. We asked government not to... to, to to, to, to stop the turning off of the internet because today we are in such a mixed up situation that one may forget the origin of the radicalization. The origin of the radicalization was the arresting of nonviolent leaders, some of whom today are still in jail and now we are getting reports we don't know whether they are dead or they are alive. Yeah, the government says they are alive. You know, mm. um, you know it's, it's unacceptable mm. and government has pushed this thing at every level. But now we as a people, we must push back. We can no longer sit and say government should. Government should, because we have been saying that for three years and government has not. So it's time now for us to come out non-violently and tell government that you have to do this. What is, what is the problem with the government? Because we've heard the President of the Republic said uh, severally that they want this to end. We've heard uh, government officials equally uh, voice their wish for this problem to be solved. But seemingly something is not moving. We saw the Prime Minister go to the Southwest and the Northwest region saying that the presidency is re he's ready for dialogue. Seemingly something is blocked somewhere. According to your session in, uh, in Munich, what is blocking this process? You know, um, there is a saying in English mm -hmm. that says... Um, who you are is speaking so loudly that I cannot hear what you say. <laughs> okay. Government, we are in a repressive, oppressive government. That is who the BR regime is. Mm -hmm. So whatever song they are singing in the moment, it's just a song. I remember when the Prime Minister went to the, the, the Northwest and Southwest regions. Yeah. I think I did an interview within yeah. hours yeah. after he went. And when I said, I do not believe this charade, oh, I got a lot of Cameroonians saying to me, this is terrible, you should have some faith, you should, you, should, you should not denigrate, and so on. Come on, we have been living with these people for 37 years, and it is the same regime which repressed people violently in, 19, in the early 1990s. It is the same regime which shot children in 2008 when they came out. It is the same regime which shot people on the 22nd of September and on the 1st of October. They have not changed over 37 years. Why would we uh, sit and imagine that they would do something different? I think this is where Cameroonians, have to, we have to take our responsibility. Somebody cannot be the same over 37 years. And in the 37th year, you are expecting some change in behavior. No. So this government does not believe in dialogue, does not believe in democracy, does not believe in any kind of negotiation with us as a people. They are an autocratic government, they are a dictatorship, and they expect that when they tell us, sit, we should sit. Stand, we should stand. No matter 
how good or bad that sitting and standing is for us. This is what we have been uh, uh, living. So um, when Mr. Bia says that he wants uh, this situation to end, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, he's telling us a lie. Don't believe in him. I, he's telling us a, a, a very blatant lie because if he wanted it to end, he would never have arrested the Agbo. Don't forget that Agbo Bala, Mancho BBC, Chi Conrad. None of them had a gun. None of them had a stick, even. These were not people who were completely non violent, whom his ministers were talking with from one day to the next. The following day, they put them in prison and called them terrorists. Now, uh, concerning the peace process and national dialogue mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. people discuss on, you call for an inclusive national dialogue to find lasting solutions to the crisis. How do we get to the national dialogue and what should be the form of the dialogue? So, um, it is important to make precise okay. for, for Stand Up for Cameroon especially okay. that national dialogue is not with the BR regime. Okay. For okay. us, national dialogue is a part of political transition. Mm. And step one in political transition is the departure of the BR regime. regime. We cannot solve the problem with those who have actively and conscientiously started and intensified this problem. We cannot. We cannot pretend today that Mr. Bia, who has sent soldiers to do a politician's job, because that we, we must be clear about that. We are blaming the soldiers on the ground, and it is clear that a lot of them are committing atrocities and violations, but they have been put in the absolute wrong place at the wrong time. And an army is a tool for the person who is governing. No army can get up by itself and go somewhere. They go on obeying no instructions. Okay. So the, Mr. Bia, instead of doing his job as a politician, talking to the population of the Northwest and Southwest regions, finding out what is the exact problem. How can we solve this problem? Rolling up his sleeves and doing what we did in Munich. That yeah. is what Mr. Bia was supposed to be doing with the population. No. He has sent the army on the ground and it has created a catastrophe. So we can no longer dialogue with him as far as we are concerned. Our definition of dialogue is we stand up as a people as the Algerians have done, as the Tunisians have done, as the Burkina Bay have done, and we ask Mr. Bia kindly pack your bags and leave. No. You and your entire regime. Yeah, but and then we begin national dialogue. Now, to ask uh, for the departure of a sitting president, um, normally, constitutionally, democratically, it's supposed to pass uh, through an election, uh, which you boycotted, and I'm sure you're not ready for the coming elections next year. Or are you participating in municipal parliamentary elections? To me, it, it's even amusing that you ask that question. Eh? I, I think it is... It, it, because you boycotted the other elections? No, I think it's ridiculous for any Cameroonian to even pronounce the word elections under the BR regime. <laughs> okay. well, how, how, you, no, I, it, it is absurd. Hmm. Let us... You know, I read a joke today that's circulating on WhatsApp about a dead horse hmm. that... In other countries, when the, uh, you, know, you are driving a cart and the horse is dead, you look for a way to dislodge the cart from the horse, you take the dead horse, you bury it, and you find a new horse. In Africa, we will promote the dead horse, we will multiply dead horses and try to increase <laughs> their number, we will try to, to declare that the horse is not dead, it's not really dead, but it's... The BR regime is a dead horse. We are going to elections with it? What, to what, do what? What are you are saying? What are where you are, say are the last people? Please, where are the last people who went to elections? Can you tell me where they are? What, what you are saying, in essence, is that, okay, you want the CNU, because you describe it as the CNU-CPM regime, out of the way without elections. Absolutely. Okay. And this 
is the, let's not act as if this is something strange. Mm -hmm. This let's not behave as if this is something strange. If we look at history, mm -hmm. one, I say this, I've said it several times. I defy we have not found at the level of stand up for Cameroon, we have done our research and we have not found one single dictator, one example in history where a dictator has been removed from power through elections. Dictators are people who control the entire electoral system. Mm. Therefore, you cannot enter the system they control to remove them. So we must do the way that all other people who have dealt with dictators have done. The Egyptians did it and removed Mubarak. The Tunisians did it and removed Ben Ali. Those were people who had been in power 25 years, 28 years. Those are dictators, like our own. Hmm. The Burkina Bay did it with Compaore. The Sudanese have done it with, ben, with, 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 with Bashir. Nobody could have imagined that Sudan could get rid of Bashir. They have been able to do it. So, Algerians have done it with so Buteflika. Yeah. So the, 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 it is instead, I would say, if you ask me about elections, I would ask you that, my friend, which planet <laughs> are you living on? Okay. Because on this planet Earth, the way that we have gotten rid of dictators is through the movement of the people on the streets. So your idea of uh, national dialogue is without the current regime? Without the current regime that is going being... To hold, that is going to hold after this regime is gone? Without the current regime being in power. Okay. Because if they are in power, they will. Co this is a regime that corrupts every single thing that it touches. Mm. We have had the experience of the national tripartite. We have had the experience of the national tripartite. The last time they told us that they could hold a dialogue, a national dialogue, mm -hmm. being in power, was the national tripartite. How many of the things decided in the tripartite have been implemented? Almost none. Mm -hmm. This crisis we are talking about, this crisis we are talking about is a crisis of decentralization. When was decentralization decided? In the national tripartite in ninety six. Now you raised the issue 97. of yeah, you raised the issue of institutional reforms, electoral uh, system. Mm, what fundamentally do you intend to, to change in the system as it exists today? So when we talk of a national dialogue, mm. it is for us as Cameroonians to decide together. Mm. The form mm. of the state? The form of the state. Mm. Then first please let us start because form of the state is a second question. Okay. The first question is what is the nature of the state? Mm -hmm. In Cameroon today, we are living in a colonial state which has never reformed itself. Why are our armed forces repressive? They are the armed forces that the colonizer left behind. What is the, the design of armed forces under a, a colonial state? It is there, the armed forces are there to protect the colonizer against the people. So you see, we changed the colonizer, we changed and put <laughs> Cameroonians in place, but we never redesigned the system. So today, our military, our police, and so on, they are trained, their culture is that they are there to protect those who are ruling against we, the people. So we must first of all redefine the nature of the state to say that this state is at the service of the citizen. Mm. Armed forces are there to protect the citizen at all costs, even against the state if necessary. The administration is there to serve the citizen. The citizen has a right, a fundamental right to water, to electricity, to a road. These things are not things that we should be having parties to, to jubilate about when we get them as if somebody has given us a gift. Not the sort of road you used to come here. Not the kind of road that I used to, 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 to arrive here, mm -hmm. which is shocking. These people are paying taxes. You are paying taxes. How can we, in the middle of Douala, have this type of a road? So, um, you know, we must redefine the nature of the state and, and say that the state... Is these are institutions put in place to serve the people, not the other way around. 
then we will discuss the form mm -hmm. of the state. We would now ask ourselves, if we are here to serve the people, what is the best form that we must, in what way, what is the best way to organize this state so mm. that it actually gets those services to the people? And there you see that a state which is federal or decentralized comes naturally. You don't even have to think about it because mm. why do you decentralize the state? Why do you make a federal state at local level so that you get the services to the people? Why do you give autonomy to people at the local level so that you can accommodate all of your diversity? There is no question in our minds that the northerner is different from the person in the south. There is no question that the Anglophone southwest is different from the east. How do you accommodate all of these different cultures, different histories, and so on, you're talking, by you're, giving more you're talking, autonomy? You are talking about uh, decentralization and uh, cultures and like. Yes. There is a creation of the Bilingualism Commission to cater for things like that. And the, the <laughs> <laughs> we, are not, we are not going, we are not going to we are not going to make it to the end of this interview <laughs> because you keep thinking she, and that's a dead horse. You remember the dead she's horse? Loving. And the president talks about fast tracking. You, the, the you remember the dead horse? The only thing I'm doing with the dead horse is removing it from the cart okay, okay. and burying it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm not having any discussions about a dead horse. horse okay. <laughs> we, are taking, we are taking a short break at this juncture. We come right back to continue our discussions with our guest. Welcome back. You're watching The Points on my media prime. The guest on the program today is Saidit Kawala. She is the national president of the CPP party and equally the leader of Stand Up for Cameroon movement. She was in uh, Munich, Germany, where she took part in the Cameroon Patriotic Diaspora Forum, the third edition. And she is here to tell us uh, what was discussed at that level, explaining why certain decisions were taken and the big vision they have for Cameroon. Uh, Madam Kawala, um, you are expecting the release of political prisoners in Cameroon. What is that going to change? And what is your definition of a political prisoner? Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, yes, so the, the, the only thing <laughs> I want my dead horse to do for me yes. <laughs> before, before going is mm -hmm. one, ceasefire. Mm -hmm. Stop the shooting. Mm -hmm. and two, release political prison. prisoners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are three types of prisoners for us, which we on, for whose release we demand mm -hmm. today. One is those who were illegally and arbitrarily arrested in the fight against Boko Haram. Mm -hmm. Many Cameroonians are not aware because the army fought Boko Haram. They were able to, to, to push back Boko Haram to some degree. But the people in the extreme north paid a heavy price for that because the tactics which we see today, today in the Anglophone region were used in 2014-2015 in the extreme north, meaning that if there was a Boko Haram attack somewhere in this neighborhood and they thought that somebody ran into this house and was a Boko Haram, they would arrest, come in and arrest all of us, take 100 of us to be arrested. Now, to date, some of those people are still in jail. Another category of people under there was, we know three young uh, uh, men, they happen to be Anglophones, by the way, who were in high school and who sent a joke, mm -hmm. and a joke about Boko Haram on SMS, on text messages. Those young men were arrested. They were sentenced to 10 years. They are still under arrest today. So that is category one. Category two are the Anglophones who were arrested and who continue to be arrested. This morning I was reading stories about arrests. So we know that the, the military has systematically gathered up, especially young men, a few young women, um, under one pretext or the other. 
I remember at the beginning of the crisis, images which all of us had on our phones mm -hmm. were a pretext to arrest people in the Northwest and Southwest regions. Uh, people have been killed because they were just standing in the wrong place at the wrong time. So we want all of those arrested. Then not to talk of the names which we know. The Chi Conrads, the Galim Felix, the, the uh, 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 Terence Penn, and so on, who were non-violent. I insist again, these people were arrested in January 2017. Nobody had even dreamed of a gun at that time. These people are still in jail. The third category are those who have been arrested under the post-electoral crisis. Mm. That is the CRM, Maurice Kamto, and his allies, the Pendai Kukas, and, and so on and so forth, who have been arrested simply for expressing themselves politically. So these three categories of people need to be released. They need to be released because we cannot go to national dialogue without them. Mm -hmm. We cannot go forward politically without them. These are people who stood up. Their crime is to have stood up for their rights and for their political vision of things. How do we build a nation? I can tell you that I don't agree with all of them. Mm. Amongst the Anglophone prisoners are people who uh, are for, for secession. I am not for secession. However, they have a right to their political opinion, opinion yeah. and to express it. And I don't believe that we can build Cameroon of tomorrow if we don't, if I don't talk to them, if we are not able to create conditions where we can dialogue together, we'll never be able to build this country. If we have uh, 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 Maurice Kamto, as you know, CPP do not, did not go for elections, mm -hmm. but it was his right to, go, to for go, go for elections if he felt that that was the political solution. And he cannot go for elections say he has won he is saying he has won mr bia is saying he has won why mr bia has more right than him to say that he has won no and even if we take mr bia's results even if we say yes okay mr bia you won mm. then according to mr bia's results this is the person who came in second are we going to live in a country where a political leader who comes in second is going to find himself in jail. So these are the categories of people who have to be released because these are fundamental rights. Mm. The right to political opinion, the right to political well, expression, that's, that's, action that's, that's, are that, fundamental that, that's rights. Some, there are some uh, former regime barons who are saying that they're in prison for political reasons because they are in the, the city of the big man. You know, there I am less knowledgeable yeah, about okay. i'm less knowledgeable about and i think that we will definitely get to these people mm. um once we are in a transition period there are people who have to be dealt with mm. but their case is different because till today none of them has denounced the regime mm. they say they are there for political reasons yeah but we have somebody like marafa amidu yeah who has openly overtly he has written several yes. even stating his vision for this country yes the, 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 i think maybe he's the one uh, uh exception um but once again i i wonder i have to, I, I i have to honestly say i have a, a question mark because these are people who only began questioning the regime which they were they were they were pillars of because i cannot say they were members of the regime mr marafa is responsible for every election in this country uh, um, between uh, the 90s and today. He never questioned the regime. He never questioned the way things were done um, until he was caught up in his own trap. Um, there is, to me, I am not sure what is the situation with these people. It's very clear that their cases have come up in court. They have not, these cases seem to lack uh, substance. Mm -hmm. And um, very clearly, these are cases to be dealt with in, in the case of the transition. But they are very, in a very different category from those who are opposed to the system 
and who have been put into jail because they are opposed to the system. Now, since you're talking about transition, you seek, amongst other things, for a synergy amongst political, civil society forces for that objective. That yes. is, you want to get everybody into one umbre under one umbrella to be able to get the president out of the of, of, of power so that that transition actually takes effect. Is it possible in our context? You remember uh, that uh, efforts were made mm -hmm. to bring the opposition under one umbrella to be able to ask the president. Mm -hmm. It was very, very difficult. And as we speak, there is another uh, umbrella under which political parties are operating, led by a Lindy Lobe called Kautar. We know that there is another one, they call them G, 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 V, mm -hmm. who are supporting the President of the Republic. How do you bypass all of that to be able to create a synergy? So, one mm. is that we are not, we are very clear. Mm. We are not in a strategy that supports the regime. I told mm. you they have to leave. Yeah. We are not in an electoral stat strategy, which is the strategy of Mr. Elimbi Lobe. Yeah. We are in a strategy to oust the this pre regime. regime yeah. And we are not trying to create a, a large organization or bring everybody into one political party and so on and so forth. No. Mm -hmm. We are simply seeking to talk to one another, mm -hmm. to create synergies, to know the left hand should know what the right hand is doing mm. and we should act in a way that gets us to our final objective. So I think we are being very realistic. We are not trying to create one party or even one umbrella organization where everybody will be inside and so on. We are saying, let us cooperate. Mm. Let us collaborate. Let me know what you are doing. Let us do our actions in such a way that they produce a result. So Maybe. I think this is uh, lessons learned from the past and uh, okay. trying to be uh, more effective going forward. Barista Aliskum was uh, appointed to champion activities back home. Mm -hmm. You just came in yesterday. I'm sure you guys are going to get to work immediately. You had the blessings of the AGC yes. and uh, you equally at Munich say you, ha you are giving them their blessings. You support their initiative. Mm -hmm. Are you going to join forces with them? Should something change with the AGC henceforth? So, um, it's very important to note that the, the declaration points are the mm. declaration of the Cameroon patriotic diaspora. Yeah. Um, so, the AGC, uh, as far as stand up for Cameroon is concerned, okay, yeah. we gave them uh, our blessing from the get go. We cooperated very, very closely with the AGC, mm. providing as much support as we could provide mm. and um, we continue to support any initiative that is about Cameroonians dialoguing. Mm -hmm. The idea that um, Anglophone Cameroonians have to discuss for us is essential. We, the situation on the ground is a very, very difficult situation and we know one thing that there are at least, maybe there are more, but there are at least three tendencies amongst mm -hmm. Anglophones. Mm -hmm. We believe that 99% of Anglophones agree that there is an Anglophone problem. Now, how do we solve the problem? How do we solve the for, Anglophone problem? For some, mm -hmm. they are part of the regime, and they believe that it is a matter of... Uh, tweaking one or two things here, changing one or two things here in the regime, and this will solve the problem. There are others who believe that things are so bad that we no longer even want to belong <laughs> to this mm -hmm. republic. Mm -hmm. We want to form, you know, we want to go back to what they call the restoration or independence yeah. or mm -hmm. what, you know, they, they want to be on their own. And there are those of us, I, uh, myself in the middle, who say things are bad, very bad. But they are bad not with the country, but with the regime. We should therefore put the regime out, out mm. so that we can discuss how we are going to live together. And those in the middle generally feel that there must be power and resources which leave the center, the central government, and go to 
local governments. That's complete decentralization. So this can be, some people call it federalism, mm -hmm. some people call it decentralization, and there are many variations in there. Some mm -hmm. want two states, some want four states, others want ten states, but the, the essence of what they are thinking is the same. And you see that because we've not been able to get to a dialogue table with this regime, we have to kick them out to be able to have these discussions. Now, the AGC, the AGC uh, after the, 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 the outing of U.S. Congress and other, other quarters out of the country, the AGC thinks that the Anglophone problem is a Cameroonian problem. We should, preference should be given to Cameroonians to solve it to you uh, by that opinion. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Nobody is going to solve our problem for us. Mm -hmm. We cannot, we, we, we as Cameroonians, I think the, the, my key message, whether we are Anglophones or we are Francophones, we have a silent majority still in mm -hmm. this country. The extremes, they shout so loudly. We have on one extreme, this extremist government, which is only willing to use violence to solve every problem, shouting. On the other extreme, we have those who have taken up arms because it is so bad that they feel that the solution is an armed one. Mm -hmm. The majority of us are in the middle. Mm -hmm. We want to solve a problem. We do not want to do it with violence. Yeah, but it's been three so, years now. And so, yes. But, you know, the thing is that moderates tend to also be moderate in action. <laughs> so it's time because we see the cost to all of us. We see the cost of allowing the extremes to, to monopolize the discussion. Mm -hmm. So it's time for us in the middle. And I really want to say to English-speaking Cameroonians, I want to say to Anglophones, that the, the, the people who will lose the most if we do not stand up uh, is us. We are losing now. This afternoon, I got news of a 10-day uh, 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 ghost lockdown, town yeah. lockdown again in uh, uh, northwest and southwest. I mean, our economies are in shambles. We, we, I hear us talking about back to school and some people say, yes, go and tell government to go. Who should go and tell government? We are the only people to go and tell government. We are the only people to carry out action. We have to stand up. We have to do sit-in. We have to wear black, even if it's every day until, until we get results hmm. this government is not going to act we have been waiting for them for three years so we must take action as that reasonable majority in the middle who says yes there is a problem but we have to find the solutions without violence we have to find the solutions together as a country now the munich uh, forum equally supports the initiative of uh, former african heads of states that are to organize a colloquium or a symposium. What do you expect to come out of that? It's simple. Um, and uh, Africa has been, I, I, I want to talk a little bit about the advocacy efforts, both in Africa and, and elsewhere. Uh, yeah. um, Africa is late. Mm -hmm. Africa, the continental African institutions are late. Mm -hmm. The African Union has a Peace and Security Council Mm -hmm. The Peace and Security Council of the African Union has all the instruments to intervene in the Cameroonian problem. They have not even begun debate. Because they have not begun debate, because the way international problems are solved most of the time, the country which is concerned can bring the problem to the table. Cameroon has not brought that. On the contrary, it has fought to keep the problem off the table in most institutions. Mm -hmm. um, then your neighbors, you will usually say, hey, the, the way things are going in this country, you know. So our CEMAC, uh, Central African region, has not reacted. The next level is the African yeah. Union. The African Union has not yet reacted. So what happened? I think many people saw the ARIA-style meeting that took yeah. place at the UN. And we had countries like China and Russia who were saying, hey, wh why are you bringing this here? These guys are in a neighborhood. Their neighbors should know better what is the solution than the international community. Mm -hmm. So we see that some of the slowness at international level 
is due to the slowness at African level. So let us hope that the African head of state, because they don't have, they don't have power to do anything. There's no but, instrument they can use to force. But they, yeah. yes, but they can push for this to be put on the table of the African Union Peace and Security Council, so that we can finally get action. I want to talk a little bit about the advocacy in the U.S. Okay. Uh, and to congratulate all the groups. So this is a beautiful example. So many groups you were there. have been, yeah, mm. of course, mm. we have been advocating to the U.S. Congress, to the State Department for mm. years now. And um, the resolution 358, which was passed last week, um, is a very strong revolution, uh, a resolution, yeah. which was passed. The champion, of course, was Karen Bass. Uh, Karen Bass is a congresswoman from... Uh, uh, California. Who was in Cameroon. Who was in Cameroon. It's important to know that Karen Bass, this was not her first visit to Cameroon. Okay. We have worked with Karen Bass in the past as a, as a woman leader in women's leadership uh, uh, forums. So she knows Cameroon. And if I'm not mistaken, I think she has done her DNA and she comes from Cameroon. Okay. So she has a, 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 you know, an attachment to the country and she led this resolution, which was unanimously uh, passed in Congress, uh, which is a very important point. You know, in the U.S., the Democrats and the Republicans, they don't agree on much, but yeah. they were able to agree on, on, on the Senate, Cameroon. Senate equally passed a resolution. And, 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 back, yeah. and the Senate uh, has, has, has passed a certain resolutions. There's another one which is on the table. Most importantly is that the U.S. Uh, budget is going to be passed before the end of September. And a group of senators have put an amendment into the budget which stops all funding to Cameroon, military assistance, except for the fight against Boko Haram. And there the senators are saying that we, it looks like our assistance is being used to commit human rights abuses, especially in the Northwest and Southwest regions. So until such a time as you can prove to us that American military assistance is not being used for human rights abuses, we will suspend Ma that. Ma that Madam, Madam, Madam Kamala, we have had the U.S. Uh, Congress passing a resolution, the Senate passing a resolution. A resolution. We saw the European Union. The European Parliament. Parliament yes. equally, equally talking about it at the level of uh, the German uh, Bundestag. German Bundestag yeah. At the level of uh, the, the House of Commons in the U.K., People think that the West is just talking and talking and talking while people are perishing down here. I think it's important mm. for us to um, be clear how international uh, relations work. Mm. Nobody, I want to say to Cameroonians, nobody is coming to save Cameroon. Okay. We must save ourselves. People can help us. They can put pressure, they can give a push, but we as Cameroonians must save ourselves. So if we do not carry out action, and believe you me, sometimes when we go for advocacy, these people ask us, Madam Wala, yes, we see you, we see you, 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 you go out on the streets, we see you, but where are the other Cameroonians? They must be comfortable with this situation. They must be okay with this situation. So we have to realize that I know there is fear mm -hmm. because we are faced with a violent government and it's normal for us to be afraid. However, we must overcome that fear and come out in our numbers. This is a numbers game. Is that a strategy that was adopted? This, in this is a numbers game. We must come out in our numbers. We must come out where the power is, not in Northwest and Southwest. You know, I'm sorry, but these lockdowns and ghost towns and so on in Northwest and Southwest, we have evidence, three years of evidence, that they do not produce any result whatsoever. We need to take action in Yaoundé, in our numbers, and ask this regime calmly without violence we are not we we we, we are not uh, uh, going to in spite of the fact that they have been oppressive we are not going to oppress them we are only going to ask them to pack their bags 
and go. Now, uh, we are out of time, Madam Kawala. Your position on this back to school campaign. Almost uh, many organizations are on it. We see government officials going down to the Northwest and Southwest region. What is the position of uh, the, the, the forum that met in Germany? So I think our position is clear. We absolutely want children to go back to school. Mm -hmm. We do not want bullets flying around the ears of those children as they go back to school. So our pressure is on government. Government officials, what are they doing going to Northwest and Southwest? Let them sit down with where the problem is, which is with the shooting. Let them sit down and give us a roadmap of ceasefire. Some of us are willing to help them. Some of us are willing to be part of those who will talk to people on the ground and so on if the discussion is about ceasefire. Government cannot be campaigning for back to school. Government must be carrying out action to stop shooting. Madam Kawala, it was a pleasure having you on the program. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you very much.